This video is part of the course that is GraphQL with Spring Boot. Link for this course is given in the description. Hello and welcome back. So till now we have seen what is GraphQL, what is query, mutation and schema in the GraphQL. Now it's the right time to see that what is the difference between REST API and GraphQL. So in this lecture we will see what is the difference between REST API and GraphQL. In REST API we have fixed response. Say for example you have one REST API and you are exposing 10 fields to your consumers in the response. So every consumer will get 10 fields in the response for that particular API. But in the case of GraphQL, okay, for that operation only, different consumers can ask for different fields in the response. Okay, I just want one field out of these 10 fields. Other consumer may ask, okay, I want these 5 fields, don't give me other 5 fields, that has no use to me. Okay, so different consumers may ask for different fields in the response for the same operation. Okay, out of 10, one may ask for 3, one may ask for 7. Now let's understand this by taking the example of SQL query. So let's go to my SQL workbench. So say for example we have student table and these are the columns inside the student table. ID, first name, last name, email. So this is basically your REST API, select star queries. You are getting all the column values for a student in the result set. Now here is another query okay, which is just giving us first name and last name of the student from the student table. Okay, just two columns in the result set. So this is basically you can say this is GraphQL and this is your REST API. Okay, in REST API, if you don't need this column, still you will get in the response. But with GraphQL, you have flexibility. Okay, I'm just asking for the first name and last name in the query itself. So give me these two column values only. So basically in GraphQL, you are saying I want two fields in the response only for the student. But with REST API, this one, you are getting student ID, email as well, which doesn't have any use to your consumer. Say for example, one consumer is just looking for first name and last name. Now, another consumer may ask, okay, I want email of the student as well. So GraphQL provides that flexibility as well. So this you can consider as GraphQL and this is basically your REST API, fixed response. Now, let's take a real world example. Say for example, there is one restaurant which provides two options to their customers. First option that there is a fixed dish in which they are providing 5 or 10 items. Okay. Now the second option is buffet that customer can order which items he or she wants. So here fixed dish in which restaurant is providing 5 items fixed that is basically your REST API and the buffet system is basically the GraphQL. Now let's move forward for the other differences between the REST API and GraphQL. The one problem we may face in REST API is overfetching or underfetching of the data. Say for example, you have student management service and in that you have one REST API, okay, HTTP GET method that is giving the student details by ID and you are giving 50 fields in the response. Now one consumer just needs 10 fields, okay. So other 40 fields you are populating in the response, but consumer is not interested in that 40 fields. Still, you are giving those 40 fields in the response. So basically you are overfetching the data for that consumer. Now, second consumer may need 20 fields only. And still you are giving more 30 fields in the response to that consumer. So that consumer may come to you that, okay, I just want these 20 fields only in the response in the format of JSON. Why you are providing more 30 fields in the response, which have no use to me, right? Because he is just interested in the 20 fields of the student, but you are populating 50 fields. So that is basically overfetching of the data. Now to understand the underfetching of the data, let's take the example of two different APIs. Say for example, you have two GET APIs. One is getting the first name of the student by student ID. You are just populating the student's first name by student ID. The second is you are just populating the student's last name by the student ID. So two GET APIs you have by student ID. 
one is returning just first name another one is just returning the last name okay now say for example one consumer comes to you and say that i want first name and last name of the student by student id so you will say that okay we have two get apis hit these two get apis and you will get first name and last name of the student by student id so that consumer will think okay why i need to hit two get apis to get the first name and last name of the student so he may ask you that okay why can't you provide one operation in which you give me first name and last name of the student and in request i will pass the student id so if you are using rest api then you need to implement the third operation that is basically your get api another get api right in which you will populate the first name and last name of the student and in the request you will ask for the student id so this is basically the underfetching of the data and with graphql you can avoid it now let's jump to mysql to understand this overfetching and underfetching of the data so here say for example this is one get api here you are returning just first name here you are returning just last name okay so two different get apis now this is your third api in which you are returning first name and last name both for the student okay now if you are using graphql then you just need to have only one operation and you will provide the flexibility to consumer that okay in the request whatever fields you want just pass those fields and we will ensure that in the response you will get only those fields so that is the flexibility we have with graphql and that we don't have in rest api now let's move to other differences now we know right in spring boot we have rest controller and we have mapping get mapping post put and delete mapping and we provide uri for each and every api slash create student slash update student like that and our entry point is rest controller while in graphql with spring boot we don't have rest controller we just have query and mutation we have already seen what is the role of query and mutation now you will understand more right because in graphql we don't have rest controller and also we don't need to provide mapping we don't have separate endpoint for each and every api we just have one endpoint in our graphql application and all calls will go to that endpoint only for each and every operation you have inside your graphql application and all calls are http post method so in graphql query and mutation is the entry point you don't have any mapping get mapping put mapping no you don't need to use at request body annotation because we don't have rest controller right so we don't need to use at request body annotation as well that will be done by the schema and as we proceed further in the course you will learn that as well so in graphql we just have one endpoint for the application in rest api we have different endpoints for each and every api now in graphql we have already seen right we need to provide the schema then only the field will be visible to the consumers otherwise that field will not be visible to your consumers while in the case of rest we don't have concept of schema okay so schema is just in the graphql not in the rest api now we have much talked about the graphql and the flexibility that we have with graphql that we can pass the fields that these are the fields we want in the response right so now let me quickly show you one simple graphql query that we can hit to our spring boot application okay so that you will understand what is the flexibility in graphql so let's jump to browser so here is graphql query and this is one operation getting the student by id we are providing the student id 1 in our input and for our response we are saying that we just want students id and first name in the response now just click on the send request see in the response we got just id and first name of the student where the student id is 1 now another consumer comes okay and says i want last name as well see now in the response we are getting the last name of the student as well earlier the first consumer was just asking for the id and first name he was not getting the last name now the third consumer comes and says i want city field as well okay see so if the consumer is asking in the request itself 
then only you are populating the field in the response. So this is basically on demand you are serving the fields in the response. If consumer is asking for the field, then only you are populating that field in the response in the format of JSON. Can you imagine this flexibility with REST API? No, right? With GraphQL only we have this flexibility. So you write one operation and then it's up to consumers what fields they want in the response and you are only populating those fields that the consumer is asking in the request. See, there is no overfetching of the data over here. If I am removing ID field, I will not get the ID fields value in the response for this particular student. Don't think that this is very complex. No, you are going to learn all these things in step by step manner. Okay, so don't worry that how to write this and all. All things you will learn as you proceed in the course. Now, you may be thinking that when to go for REST API and when to go for GraphQL. See, that's up to you. Because the best person who knows your application is you. Say for example, your application is getting millions of hits per day. Okay, then the performance matters. See here, if you are not populating all the fields, then it will improve the performance of your application and the performance of your each and every API. If your consumer are complaining about the overfetching or underfetching of the data, then switch to GraphQL. If your consumers and you are satisfied with the REST APIs, then you don't need to switch to GraphQL. You can continue with REST APIs. See, it's up to you. So what I would recommend is that just have one Spring Boot application with REST APIs handy. Then only you can compare it with GraphQL. So have one REST APIs with Spring Boot application handy and try to implement those APIs with GraphQL and Spring Boot. Then only you can compare that I should go for GraphQL or I should go for REST API. At the end choice is yours. So this is the difference between REST API and GraphQL. If you like the video then please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell like the video, do comment in the comment section and share with your friends. Do you want to learn GraphQL? If yes, then I am having complete course on it that is GraphQL with Spring Boot. This course covers what is GraphQL, what is GraphQL query, mutation, schema and the difference between GraphQL API and REST API. This course also covers the real-time implementation of GraphQL with Spring Boot. This course also includes how to use Project Lombok with Spring Boot application. So, what are you waiting for? The course link is given in the description. Just click on that link and start your journey of GraphQL with Spring Boot. We'll see you in the another video. Till then, happy learning and happy coding.